Welcome to the Indiana Basketball Weekly Show on the Grueling Crew Sports Network. The Indiana Basketball Weekly Show is brought to you by MyBookie.ag. So if you want to bet on some NCAA tournament games to make it interesting, since Indiana is not going to be in the damn thing, you can go to MyBookie.ag on the GruelingCrew.net, click the banner and bet some games and I don't know. I'm your host, Mike Goodpaster. Indiana loses tonight, 76-69 to Rutgers. And on that note, I'm going to welcome in my co-host, former Indiana Hoosier, Steve Risley. How you doing, Steve? Uh, I've had better nights, Mike. I've, I've had better nights, no doubt. Obviously, a very disappointing night for the Hoosiers. Um, you know, we, we come out of the gates looking like we're going to get ourselves in a position to where we can dream. And um, the Department of Redundancy Department takes over again, kind of the same thing that you've seen all year long, uh, rears its ugly head one more time. We start getting complacent with what we do. Um, we start, I want to say, playing not to lose. We don't read things well. I don't think we make good player decisions from the bench and getting the right people at the game or keeping people in the game. Um, it, it was just, just really, a, I don't even want to say a microcosm, but it was just a mirror effect of kind of what the entire season's been like for us. And I guess uh, you live by the sword, you die by the sword is kind of the old adage. I mean, it's just can't go to any one thing and say that that was the, the defining moment of us losing. I can't. I just see it as just a boulder kind of coming down the mountain and it's finally going to run into something and it seems to have been bouncing off Indiana all season long. Um, the thing I'd say tonight, and let's elaborate on it or I will or you don't have to, um, but what's disappointing me the most tonight really was the coaching. I just think we got out coached tonight. Um, I, I just really think you know, it's no indictment against anybody. I just think we just didn't make the coaching decisions to stem ties, um, handle assaults, uh, have the right personnel in at the right time. Um, we're way too cautious when they're making their big run at the end of the first half. We're sitting there and we're all, everybody in the world is screaming timeout. And I don't know what Archie Miller knows that, that a lot of smart Indiana basketball fans don't know or see. Um, but I, I just think, but I think that among other things, the thing that stood out most to me was just, what are we thinking from the bench to let this continue to erode to a point of where the erosion is going to get faster than we can plug the holes in the dam? Yeah. And this is not Purdue. You blow a lead against, I mean, they come out, they dominated Rutgers right. at Rutgers just a few weeks ago in this game. I mean, the Hoosiers locked on defensively the first 15 minutes first 14 minutes, they hold Rutgers to just eight points. They're up 24 to eight. And I think Miller let this go on a 14, nothing run before he used the timeout, but made it like 24, 22. The next thing, you know, this run continues into the second half and the Scarlet Knights from being down 24 to eight, go on a 32 to 10 run. Um, and I'm sorry. It's an indictment of Miller. He's the one coaching the team. This was a joke. I mean, this last three or four games of the season has been a joke. I mean, we got Colin Hartman all of a sudden playing important minutes when he hasn't in forever. Um, Juwan Morgan gets two fouls in the let first me, let half. Me add, interrupt, Jack. He, well, the point there is Colin should have been playing important minutes yes. earlier in the season. Not, not that we're putting – Collins no, this this is the on the coach Collins because it's earlier. Yeah, Collins not ready to play. He's not ready to play because he's not been given an opportunity to get ready to play. Yeah, so go ahead. And I mean, I want to Collins on this. This wasn't Collins' fault. Yeah, I will. He was, I, he was that's put into that situation. That's why I that's said what I this is on Archie Miller. I'd have got to that until yeah. you interrupted me, but that's all right. Sorry. <laughs> But then we got this dumbass. If you get two fouls in the first half, you got to come out of the game. So he pulls Juwan Morgan out with two fouls. Um, and that was in that last six minute period. Um, I'm sorry. When you're one and done, you play with your best player. And I'm sorry, Juwan Morgan's not that good. If he can't stay out of foul trouble in that point, he should be smart enough to be play, be able to play through that. And I'm sure he is. And then at the 12 minute mark, we pull him out of the game. And then we fall behind by eight to 10 points again. And then when you put him back in, they catch back up. 
And I just, the substitutions are mind-blowing to me. I mean, when we got on that run, me and you were talking either on Twitter or on the phone or whatever, and it's like, these guys have made this run to cut the game to two. Just leave them in. And I counted, there was five substitutions in that last five minutes. They're on a roll, and he stopped it. He stopped the momentum. So it's an indictment of him. He screwed this game up. And this team is better than a 16-15 and 15 team. I don't think they're a lot better than a 16-15 and 15 team. But this team continually this year, when they play Michigan State, Duke, all the better teams with really good coaches, those games went down to the final minute or two, and in every one of those games, there is questionable decisions there. And, I mean, it's one thing if it happens every once in a while, but this is continual now, especially over the last half of the season. The team started the season not ready to play. Then they get in a little bit of a groove, start to play better. But let's face it, the 16 wins, how many of them were over teams that were any good? I don't think any of them. Uh, really were against teams we can say we're really um, teams are going to be playing or making an impact into the tournament um, that, that's for sure um, I agree with your assessment I don't want to be quite as harsh but I I don't find any fault in anything you said I think this I think players play reflective of how their coaches coach and I think that coach Miller showed me late in the part of the season that when things got tough, he reverted back to what he, what he naturally knew was, you know, putting, putting the same players back in that he started with and thinking that that magic was just going to rekindle itself. Um, you know, great coaches take risks. They, they, they do things. I mean, and, and I understand the whole mentality of two fouls and you come out for a while in the first half and we got we got to spare you if we, if we can. And generally, if you ever can, you can spare a player in the first half. But if a player picks up his third foul and you're in a dogfight and it's one and done, I've never seen a, a championship coach pull a player. It's like, dude, looks him in the face, says, I'm leaving you in. It's on you to keep yourself in now. Okay? I'm going to run with you, but you've got to help me help you. And I just think that when you do that, you take your ebb and flow out. And I know we did speak live and we were talking about when they're starting to make their run. I said, right now you got to run with these five guys. You take these horses and you run with them to the end now until they just quit on you. And, but this, this group has some continuity, some momentum. And then sure enough, we don't give it enough time to breathe and, and, and he changes things again. So what I've tried to say all along is this about Archie Miller. I think he's going to be a good coach for Indiana. I think he's going to do a great job. And I think he's the future of Indiana basketball. And even I know Coach Knight was in Bloomington not this week speaking and spoke as highly of Coach Miller as he's spoken of any coach. It was reported in the papers that, you know, he said, give this guy a chance, be patient with him, and things of that nature. And I'm going to defer to that judgment um, along the way. But I'm going to tell you right now, Coaching at frickin' Dayton University is not like coaching at Indiana University. I don't care what its success was there. It doesn't equate 100% to the same shit that's going to work at Indiana University. Okay? The bullseye on the back of a jersey that said Hoosiers on it is incredibly larger than the bullseye that says Dayton Flyers on it. It's a different world. And until people understand that, until Coach Miller understands that, he's going to make these same kinds of mistakes, okay? I played against Dayton, and I played for Indiana. And I know that every time we walked into a gym, if a team could beat us, it made their season. And you have to understand that, and you have to coach to that mentality. And you have to be willing to defend your ground, defend your turf, not play not to lose, but play to win. Tonight, I felt we coached and we played not to lose. But see, Thinking I, we're I, take I think on this, the next night. I know what you're saying about the Indiana, and I know we've had this discussion before, 
Yeah, until I, we get a coach. It just proved itself tonight. Until we get, it didn't prove itself tonight. How did it prove itself tonight? No matter who Rutgers would have played, he got out coached tonight by some. Yeah, but that Rutgers. had nothing to do with the name, name on the jersey. De- Rutgers didn't play this game any harder. To do with it. Rutgers, no, Rutgers didn't play any harder tonight than they would have played if they were playing Illinois because there's not a damn bit of difference between the programs. And the reason I is disagree. this: I, I so I'm disagree sorry. with you there. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. It's, you it's <laughs> you know what? This is the thing. It's good because we never disagree. But no, when, you, when you look fault. at this, this is what I'm saying. I am saying they are no longer like that because the way they've been coached. There is no fear factor playing Indiana. Playing Indiana is like playing anybody else. You just go out, play your ass off, and try to beat them. When you were there and Bobby Knight was there, you went and intimidated. And I'll tell you what, a 24-8 to game, with an old Indiana, even if it was 2000 Indiana, would have turned into 40-14 to 14 because that team would have been defeated right then. But since Indiana is different than what it was, now nobody's taking it that way. And, I mean, the thing is this. When I look at Archie Miller on the sideline and I see him slumped down in a chair and looking like he's beaten, I don't want to see that shit. I want to see somebody up. Getting this team ready to play. There's no fear in playing this team. That's why this team loses to Indiana State. You know, it, it just is. They get beat by 30 by Indiana State. They lose to Fort Wayne. And the whole time, I mean, they. this is the thing. And it never happens where he gets pissed off against somebody's face, or very rarely does, because the four times it happened during the season, they come back and they talk about it on the side, or with the announcers because it's such a shock that he did. I mean, get in somebody's ass. Get pissed off. Now, I know I don't mean that he's going to jump around and get pissed off like Bobby Knight did because he's got a different, you know, way he carries himself. But damn it, stand up at some point and say, this is enough of this shit. We got to go play basketball. And that's what I don't see. And I'm sorry, until you can bring that to Indiana basketball, it's not Indiana basketball. We haven't seen Indiana basketball in almost 20 years, Steve. Uh, okay. All right. Are you done? Yeah. <laughs> for now, for now. So I, okay. I agree with you hundred percent. And he, here's the only thing I'm going to add to it. I don't think at this point in time, everything that you just said, I am walking away from the scene saying right now, Archie Miller does not know how to do that because he's never coached in a situation where he's had to do that. Hey, but let me he's give you this. Most of his, hang on, hang on. Okay. I'll let you finish. Okay. He has coached most of his career as an underdog coach from Dayton University. And he has overachieved at an underdog university. He is playing with the big boys now. And I don't agree with you. Indiana carries clout from now until the game of college basketball goes away. Because it is Indiana. In 49 other states, it's a game. In Indiana, it's a religion. That tradition does not vanish. Okay, it doesn't go away. And maybe he thinks it does. Maybe he's going to buy your story and say, this is not the Indiana it no, was. It's not it because of guys like him. It's an underachieving Indiana is what it is. It's an underachieving, great basketball program. And we brought him in here to overachieve because he's overachieving at Dayton. But you know what nobody gives a shit about is Dayton. Well, this is my point, Steve. I think he's going to be fine. After I go on that rant, and great. this is why. Right. This is why. No, because I agree. My, my perfect example to this is this. When you look at Duke and Coach Krzyzewski, he was completely over his head for two years. But the thing is this, and I'm not saying he's going to be Mike Krzyzewski. I hope he is. But, I mean, the thing is this. A great coach will adapt. And I think the thing that I'm most disappointed in here is that he didn't adapt as quickly as I thought he would. If that makes okay. sense. Okay, I, I agree. I agree. I, no, I agree entirely. I, I, I agree. I, I think that he will adapt. The thing that I don't like is, the, 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 I don't say, the, the, I, don't, I don't unlike anything. I think the team did fine. We got what we expected. We just hoped for more because I'll tell you what, he will adapt, but I think he had more talent to adapt quicker than he's done. Yeah, which is why I'm mad. And, right, exactly. And that's a reason to be mad. We underachieved. 
while he was adapting. Now, I look at what Holtzman has done at Ohio State. Does Holtzman have better talent than us? I, I don't know. I don't know their personnel. I thought we had adequate talent to be a game competitor in most every game in the Big Ten. I thought we had the individual parts. You know, we had a good shooting guard. We had a, a young, raw point guard in the making. We had a incredibly good inside score leader. We had support players to fill roles. And I thought, you know, when I look at how I want to build a high-performing team, I look at this whole big picture and I say, I see a lot of parts that I could build a high-performing team out of that. Now, again, 2020 vision is always perfect when you're coaching from the couch. I get that too. But I, I don't think that – we coached to the level of talent that we had, but I think that's going to rectify itself over a matter of time. So I'm, I, I'm going to, I tweeted out this. I said, you know, I said, we're all going to look back in a year or two on March 1, 2018. And we're going to say, remember when it's, it's on my Twitter page. And I've got a lot of likes on that page right now. I said, and we're all going to laugh and go, remember when, remember March 1, 2018, when we lost the Rutgers in the big 10. Because this is a defining moment, because I think it's going to go nowhere but up. Because I think Archie will get it. I think he's a good coach. I think fundamentally he's sound. We saw progression in every faucet, maybe not as fast as we would like to have seen. And maybe our expectations were too high. Well, I can tell you this, though. You know, I'm sure, I'm on sure my end, with being pissed off, this is the first time I've been pissed off at the end of a season since and that's the a great early time. 2000s. Right. I, yeah, I gave that a was shit. My next point. We are pissed off. We, we were like, we were just making apologies for Cream just trying to hide the fact that he sucked as a coach. Okay. And Tom Cruise is as nice a guy as there is in the world, but he sucks as a basketball coach at that level. Archie doesn't suck as a basketball coach at that level. Archie just has, has learning to do like everybody else does. And I think he will. And I think this will eat at him inside. And I don't think he's going to listen to our show and realize that we're the truth of all truths. But I think he's going to look back at things and go, what is should have cut up? Maybe so. And maybe we got a little bit more out of this season. Um, you know, I, I, so, but it, it is what it is. It, it's another disappointing end. It's numbers 21, 31, 41. I don't know. I've lost count um, as to how many disappointing, ends of disappointing seasons we've had in, in IU basketball for a period of time. But I do say this. I think it's one of the last we're going to see in a long time. Um, until we feel we're a national championship contender team and we don't get to the final four and win the thing. That'll be our next big disappointment, I think. I think Archie's got it. He's going to get the players he needs. Um, he's got to get a little tougher. Um, and I hate to compare every coach tonight because, you know, the great advice I got from Kent Benson was don't listen to how people say things, listen to what they're saying. I believe that probably in the long run, Knight and Miller will speak on the same what they're saying. How they say it will probably be different. Um, cause there's very few people that can say it like night and get away with it and have the success that he did. So I don't want to harp on how Knight said things. And I don't want to say that if Miller doesn't say it, how Knight said it, that he's a failure. He's not, but I got to look at things right now. And having played for Knight and known Knight for 40 years and know what to look for, what disappoints me a little bit is I wasn't seeing what he was saying as much as I was Knight. But then I, I picked up Knight you know, five years into his coaching career at Indiana when he had tenure, seasonality into him and things of that nature, and coming off an undefeated team with a national championship bell art, confidence means everything. So it, it, I just think tonight we, we, we probably – the biggest factor of among many in this game was coaching. I, I don't understand the whole concept. We, not once did we come out and annihilate somebody in the first half of the five minutes – first five minutes of the second half, like we got annihilated almost every game. Somebody's got to address that. Okay? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And we got fooled a bunch of times in the first five minutes of the second half. Somebody's got to address that. We have to come out of that locker room fighting for our lives for that mentality. We had it. We owned our, our we we owned the first five. We tried to. But we didn't that's all we focused on. We owned the first five minutes of the second half. We own it. Don't come into my house, my paint, my anything, and screw with my feng shui. 
Your feng what? You know, and it, my feng shui. Isn't that one of those Japanese things where you <laughs> put furniture in a certain alignment uh, where Venus aligns with Mars? I don't know. I saw it in a book somewhere, feng shui. <laughs> Meaning the, the way the furniture is aligned makes you feel better about yourself. I don't know. I know. Me, I just wanted to hear you say it again. Syrup. I know. But I, I just think I, I was just most disappointed tonight with coaching decisions that were made that I think led to the ineptness on the court. Um, can't fault the players. I mean, we, we make 11 turnovers. I know we, you and I talked before the show started. The problem is when we make those turnovers. We make turnovers. We you know, of our 11 turnovers. Six of them were at the end of the first half when we were on an 18-point run, Rutgers is, and we're getting killed. We make six critical turnovers. So when they happen is almost more important than the number of turnovers that you make. Ours came, over half of ours came at a horrible time. You know, we battle them even on the boards, uh, which is good. Uh, Gee, many Christmas, we end the season in the last game shooting 86% from the free throw line. That's got to be our all-time high. They'd done that all year. They'd have 22 wins. We'd have 22 wins, and we'd be worried about what seed we're going to get, 9, 10, or 11, or 8, 9, 10, or 11 in, in the tournament. Instead, we don't, you know. I mean, we only shoot 35% from the game. I think that's coupled with with poor shot selection when things get behind um, and a lack of organization from the bench to don't lose your ebb and flow, keep it in, and, and whatever genre that he wants to meld that into, but it's got to be melded into it. So, um, uh, I, I, and, but, but I, th- I think I don't think this is a this is a this is a a trait of his. I just think it's just a learning process for him too. I'm just going back to, I'm telling you what, coaching at Dayton is not like coaching at Indiana. And, and don't, you'll never convince me no matter what you try and tell me or anybody tries to tell me coaching and playing at Indiana is a different breed of cat than anybody understands until you play there. I scoff at anybody that says differently because you haven't done it. Well, you, you don't walk scoff. into the gym. You don't get on the bus. You don't show up when an IU and that Indiana on the back of your jersey. Expectations change immediately. Wow. I don't care how many years you've gone without winning a championship. And I can speak to that because I have lived it. Yeah. You haven't lived this part of it for 20 years, though. No, I. but I have lived the tradition and lore and history of Indiana basketball since 1977. As a player, as a former player, as a representative of the program, as now a idiot commentator of the program. Well, remember this though: um, twenty years ago, there wouldn't be just ten or eleven thousand people at a game with no students. Yeah, and I don't know what to make of that either. I, I mean, I, I think that's that's a piss on the students. I mean, you know, if you guys don't want to come up and support your team. The hell with you, you know, because Indiana will be great. Well, no, a wait, wait a second. Wait, wait a second. And, and those the, will be the same students. This is a Friday night, and the other game was a win, the Tuesday night against Illinois, where there's a lot of shit you could do at IU, I'm sure, on a Friday night. Why do you want to go watch a team that underperforms? That's the team's fault. I mean, I, I'm sorry, but if you're not getting a crowd to watch you play, it's usually because you're not doing anything when you're playing. And, I mean, the team – I mean, you got to earn people's support, especially when you've been down for as long as Indiana has. So I understand why students are like that. Yeah, in a perfect world, everybody's loyal and go watch us no matter what. But I'm not going to blame somebody for not going to go see a 500 team. Especially okay. when those All expectations right. are so high. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I, I guess, you know, you see, that goes with me being 59 years old been married 35 years loyalty means something to me yeah it does to me too but what i'm saying is this i I got for my wedding gift i got a watch for my wife 35 years ago it's the same watch i wear today i'm loyal i bought ping golf clubs as my first set of golf clubs i play pings today i'm loyal bet you're not using that first pair of people i own them i still have them (laughs) do you use them looking at them right now they're right here in my office do you use them my ping i twos white dot yeah, but my point is this. If you're losing, you can't really blame people for not wanting to come watch. 
Well, that's what being a fan's all about, I guess. I know, but it's not anymore. We live a in player. a different day and I'm age. I'm a player. I know. I'm a but player. if you're a player, a fan. Don't, maybe if the players take responsibility for that, win some games, people will show. Because you know yourself, if Indiana's playing anybody on a Wednesday night and they're ranked third in the country and they're 22-3, and three, the place is packed. Sure. And yeah, I, I think I mean, you've I lost – yeah, you got to remember this. With Indiana basketball, you've lost loyalty because, number one, they destroyed the state tournament in 97. Um, they took Bobby Knight out with Miles Brand and bring in guys that did not run the cleanest of programs, let's put it that way. And then, basically, you've had from 2002 to now, basically nothing. And it needs to be addressed, and I think Archie Miller is the guy to do that. And I think when we come back two or three years from now, Everything you said is going to be dead on right. Yeah, you're probably right. But in those two or three years, I, I, as in the past 30 years, I'm not going to give up on Indiana basketball and my team and my heritage, my lineage, and the kids that go represent us on that given day. Um, I think tonight, as in uh, a part of the season, in part of the parts of the season, our coaching didn't fit our talent. We didn't have the greatest, most talented teams of all time. And we didn't have the greatest coach of all time. But just looking back on it, I think that there could have been better melds in there at some points in time and better decisions on both sides of the fence. Um, but it's over and done with. I mean, so now we sit back and unless something else you want to add. Uh, there's no NIT yeah. coming out of this. I don't think there's any way to get in. Okay, that's where we go. Because well, I'm looking you know, right I... now at four brackets predicting it from Joe Lenardi, all these people. Indiana's not even on the bubble coming into this game for the NIT. Really? Okay. Yeah. I mean, the last teams yeah, I, in I, I, are I, like East Tennessee State and Tulsa. That's what. The, and so you've got the college, in, ba- college basketball invitational tournament to possibly look forward to, though. Yeah, I, you know, I think that anything they can do to keep playing right now is a good thing for this program. It's a good thing for the young talent on this team. It's a good thing for the coaching staff. So I, I would hope that we wouldn't pull this we're bigger than life thing because uh, based on everything you said, which I, I believe what you're saying. I, 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 I get it. I just don't want to accept it. Um, I, I don't want to accept more, it. You're more right than I am. But I, I hope that we go wherever we can go to play as many games this year as we can possibly play. <laughs> and we start learning how to coach this team and we start learning how to play on this team. There are a lot of, there's a lot of young talent there and, you know, we need to get these kids an opportunity to keep on the court as much as they can keep relevant <laughs> about it and do anything they can do to not end the season on a loss. Well, and I'll tell you another um, thing to prove how important Indiana basketball is though. As Indiana basketball has dropped off, the Big Ten's prestige has really fallen with it. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, it, yes. Um, I, I don't want to say it's because solely of Indiana. No, not solely, it was, but it, it has something to do with it. a large part. Sure it does. It has probably more to do with that than anything. But, you know, there's a lot of teams. Iowa used to be a, a dominant player in the Big Ten. Um, you know, Northwestern made a run there for a while. I mean, you can go down any team, Wisconsin, get to the championship game. Um, so the, the whole league is, but, but certainly Indiana is the poster child for this league. That and Michigan State are the two poster child programs. Um, well, it's kind of like in Big Ten league. football. If Ohio State all of a sudden in was Michigan, not any good, I mean, then all of a sudden the Big Ten's not any good. Because you're taking out one of those top right. programs. Right now, if you look yeah. at it, what top basketball programs are in the Big Ten? It's just Michigan State. Pretty much. Yeah, on a consistent basis. I mean, you have other teams flare up. Um, yeah, but I mean, what we're talking about is you need teams that are consistent to build a great conference. If you look at the ACC, Duke is consistently a great program. North Carolina is a great program. And then they'll have a couple guys like a Virginia this year, a Clemson this year, and all of a sudden you got five or six stud teams. You go to the Big East, Villanova and Georgetown are always good. 
Yeah, or not Georgetown. Bill, right. Villanova and Xavier are always good. And then you'll get the Butler. Butler's always good. So right there, you get three or four teams in each one of those conferences where you can almost expect three out of the four are going to be in the Sweet 16 damn near. With the Big Ten, right. there's one team we expect to be in the Big 16, or the Sweet 16. There's a couple teams right. that we think, if everything goes right, could get in the Sweet 16. Right, you're talking Purdue and Ohio State. Yeah. Actually, uh, I'm think, talking, I think, I think I'm talking State, Michigan Ohio and Ohio State. State. Overachieving. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think Purdue's a better team. I just think that they're poorly coached in tournament play. I don't think yeah. that uh, Matt has really ever done anything to state, prove his worthiness to coach in tournament play. Purdue's a team that consistently ranks in the top ten all season long gets in a tournament and finds a way to get Steve, out of the tournament as fast as they got into it. They've been that um, since, and 19, it's, it's, since Lee Rose right, left in the early 80s. Right. It's consistent. I mean, it's not like it's a one-time plug. It's just like, you know, in the first weekend, you can always say, yeah, Purdue gets upset. Purdue gets upset. Purdue gets upset. And they'll overcome that eventually. I mean, once, but they Maybe. consistently have not been able to do that. Ohio State, I think, overachieved. Um, they found a good marriage. I think that um, Holson was a good fit for that program as it sat. Now let's see what we can do to build that program. You know, um, it's kind of like Days of Thunder. You know, at the very beginning, when he goes out and drives Rowdy Yates' car and sets a new track record, this is now. Go get your own car and see what you can do with 40 other people around you. You're probably not a big Days of Thunder fan because you're not a NASCAR fan. I watched it. But uh, I'm a huge yeah, well, Talladega Knights fan, though. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, me too. Anyway, probably one of but, the greatest so, cinematic movies ever made. I can't believe it didn't win an Academy Award. I'm on fire! I'm on fire! <laughs> that was a great <laughs> movie. Burning. That's a hell of a lot better than like yeah. the piano, which they give awards uh, to. Nobody cares about that. Uh, I know. I'm all I jacked know. up on but, Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> so where do we go from here? Where we go from here is, I guess we sit back and wait and see if we end up with a bid. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think you're probably, most people are not predicting that we get a bid. Archie Miller himself came out and said he doesn't see a bid coming on the, on Twitter tonight on post game conference. And he doesn't expect a bid. I, um, I think it's always good to have an Indiana in a tournament, a team of the caliber of an Indiana program in the tournament anytime you can, especially if a tournament is struggling for recognition as the NIT would be. Um, but, you know, winning is relevant. Winning, and, and right now we haven't been winning with relevance. Uh, we didn't win with relevance all season long. Um, so, but this is our first year uh, with a new direction. Um, we're going to bring in new talent. I think this end of season hurts our recruiting. That's what concerns me the most right now. Yep. You know, that that's where my heart lies right now is, what does this do to us in terms of the Romeo Langfords of the world? And all of a sudden now, Indiana is basically unrelevant from here on out now until next October. Um, we're done being talked about in any way, shape, or form. You know, like Earnhardt used to say, I don't care if you're talking good about me or bad about me. As long as you're talking about me, you know I'm there. Right now, after tonight, it's not like anybody's going to talk about Indiana. Well, um, we, will, we will still be here, though, with the Indiana Legends of the Locker Room show that we will Yeah, that's a new exciting project. At least we'll, once we'll, a week. Can we tease Go them ahead. on that real quick? Go ahead. What, what our plan is for the fall or for the summer here is, is that uh, um, I have uh, teammates and, and friends that all have fantastic stories that we all know about and you'll enjoy them. And I've already begun contacting some of them and we hope to do here uh, shortly start and announce a series of uh, one-on-ones with individual players from all eras of Indiana basketball uh, and talk about their favorite event or story that happened in the locker room or on the team bus or on the team plane. Something that really only players know that, the smartest people in the world being sports writers aren't even privy to, um, don't know about, and maybe come out and, and enlighten you with some of the lore and legend of the locker room of Indiana basketball. Um, I know I've got a million, not a million, I have more than one hilariously funny things that happened that 
humanize the program, humanize the players, and make you really believe that the time with all coaches here is not all doom and gloom, be it from tolerating night to losing with cream um, or cheating with Samson. Um, but they're, they're, <laughs> that was good. That's that was a good. show. That's a show right That's there. Show. We'll call it cheating, che- cheating with Samson. Cheating with Samson. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're, we're putting that program together, and we'll, we'll come out. We'll have an announcement, and look for us on Twitter uh, feed or on the grueling truth, uh, dot com. Um, and, and we will come out and announce a series. We'll probably do a weekly show. Uh, but we'll have some really, really cool things you guys will really enjoy. Trust me, because we sat around at golf events with coach and, and, um, we tell these stories amongst ourselves and we just all, even though we lived them, we all end up crying because we're laughing so hard. And I'll leave you with this. What you're going to enjoy about the show is you're going to find in the heart and soul of it all, there's about 10 funny stories. And you're going to learn that over the course of the 39, 40 years or whatever long you've been part of the program, especially with the night era, there's only 10 stories to tell. But it's told <laughs> every class has a new version of that story. <laughs> and that's what became so funny. We would sit around at a golf event. We would sit around and there would be the 73 program with Ritter. There would be the 76 program with Scotty. There would be the 80 program with Woody. Or myself would be the the 87 program with Alford with, you know, all the kids. And we'd all go, I got that same story. I got that same story. Wait, wait, here's that. Here's how he painted it for us. And I, I know we've talked that, you know, I mean, in these stories, just they, they manifest themselves in the life. So you're going to really enjoy this. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I think it's something nobody else will be able to do because we, we've got cell phone numbers of former players. Um, and I've already talked to several that will definitely come on and, and tell their version of the one of the 10 greatest stories of all time about IU basketball. And you're going to hear the same story over and over again, but with different names, it's kind of like dragging that. The names have been changed to protect the innocent, <laughs> but it'll be great. So we're going to put that together for you for the summer and make it fun and, and keep positive about IU basketball because it, it, the program's in good shape. It's in good hands. Um, it's going in the right direction. I think our disappointment all tonight is that it didn't move as fast as we wanted it to move. And I think we, our expectations outgrew our reality uh, this season because we just kept seeing for the first time in a long time, we probably saw a positive movement. And knowing being a Hoosier like I'm a Hoosier, like I know you um, from Lawrenceburg, Indiana. I'm from Aurora. Hoosier, I'm fan. from Aurora. I Aurora, live in Lawrenceburg. 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 Here's the difference. Okay. All I right. can well, read and write. From I don't go. I don't live. Park, so down <laughs> I seventy four way, um, down there where they make caskets. Um, so you all are going to be buried well. Somebody's got to do um, it. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. But uh, we all live and breathe IU basketball, and I think it's a fun thing. It's a great thing to believe in. It is the greatest college basketball program in the state of Indiana, and it is one of the ten greatest college basketball programs in the country. And probably realistically one of the five best college basketball programs in the country. We're going through a slump, but we're on our way out of the slump. Archie Miller is our man. And we've got some young talent. And we need to get back to recruiting out of the state of Indiana, which produces some of the greatest basketball players in the the country. And bring our values back to this program and, and, you know, get back on on, on the growth pattern that we, we finished the season with. I know the last game was ugly. It was disappointing, heartbreaking, but we still, I think we got, we're better at the end of the game season than we were at the beginning of the season. And, and to me, that's something we haven't seen for a long time in Indiana basketball. That I'll let you wrap it up. Look for messages on the Grilling Truth. And when we get the series set on Legends of the Lore of the Locker Room, I'm going to call it. And uh, we'll start that up here probably right around tournament time. And um, we got some people lined up, ready to go, and we'll start telling some funny stories. All right, guys. Uh, make sure you go check out thegrudelytruth.net. Another thing we're going to do to try to keep the Indiana basketball thing going for all the fans out there is I'm also writing articles probably about once a week about different things <clears throat> in Indiana high school basketball. Or Everybody knows the story of 1954 Milan. 
Um, not everybody knows the story of 1912-1913 Wingate High School, which is an article that will be up here in the next day or two. Uh, a lot of smaller schools that made runs and won sectionals or semi-states. I'm actually talking to some people, writing articles about those. So if you love Indiana basketball, whether it be of the high school variety or the college variety, make sure you follow the gruelingproof.net. Um, tomorrow night on our NFL Legends show, you can listen to me interview Roy Jefferson. Roy played for the Steelers for five years, the Baltimore Colts, then the Washington Redskins. He was a multiple-time pro bowler that has the stats to be in the Hall of Fame but wasn't put there. I've already done the interview. It, it was a great interview. I mean, he was a great man, and he was a great player. Still a great man. So make sure you check that out. Um, also, you can hear all of our shows on iHeartRadio, iTunes, TuneIn, Spreaker, Stitcher. Wherever you hear sports podcasts, you will find the grueling truth. So? A couple things here. A couple things here. Number one, let me say, if we get invited to the NIT, we will be back on the air. What about the uh, CBI? We we'll be back on the air. If Indiana plays, if Indiana we plays, comment. we're there. We're there. We're there. We're, we're with these users. We're Even there. Even if they're playing comment. down in the local park down in Greendale, Indiana, we're going to be there. Secondly, I heard on a Twitter page the other day that Bobby Plump's shot in 1954 has now gone to 74 feet. Uh, although I think the court was only 72 feet long at the time. <laughs> um, but it's now 74 foot set jump shot. Um, if you want to have Bobby um, on, we can get Bobby on to talk about his 75 foot set shot. We don't have enough time. I mean, you know, I, I don't think that there's enough time. The story, the length of time he takes to tell about that shot is longer than the game itself. Yeah, but back um, then with no so TV I, I, timeouts, the game was over in like a half hour anyway. <laughs> and the first story you're going to hear, no, the second or third story you're going to hear, I'm just going to throw it out there now. And his little legend of Indiana basketball thing that he's going to do is going to be, how Aurora upset Lawrence Central in 1977 behind Tim Johnson, blasting out 41 points, whatever he scored, I don't even know, and drilled Lawrence Central, who was bound and determined to get to the state championship game, of which I was the leader of that team. Now, see, Steve, so this is the I am, thing. I am going to comment. I'm when when get I get the to line. the point of writing that article, you'll know because <laughs> I'm going to ask you some questions for it. So, I, and and it's I'm not going to be next because it's too <laughs> obvious. So maybe I'll just wait till the day the game was played and drop the article on that day. I just got to find out what day that was. I know it would have been like the second March or the second week of it March. It was a Saturday morning. It I know it was Saturday a Saturday morning. morning. You guys I'll were the second forget. game too, weren't you? The 12 o'clock game? Uh, yeah, we had lasagna dinner lined up somewhere nearby. <laughs> we took back to Lawrence Central <laughs> Ate at home in the gym as we cried while Richmond was playing Aurora that night. Oh no, no that Franklin was Columbus was East. Aurora. Richmond got yeah, Columbus East. Richmond got beat too. Yeah, so crap. And then we were all just were listening to the game and and watching Tim Johnson and everybody. And Tim Johnson, he didn't couldn't follow through. At that point, we're rooting for the damn ass, the damn guy. And then they end up losing. So. Yeah, if you remember, he got hurt. I think in early in the third quarter. <laughs> which I think affected that game, too. Okay, excuses. excuses I think he'd hurt his excuses. leg hey, from I, 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 kicking your ass so bad. What? I want to thank <laughs> everybody for listening to us this season. It's my first year of ever doing something like this. I got a lot to learn. Uh, I love to tell stories. Uh, I enjoy the fascination of Indiana basketball. It's a privilege and honor to have been a part of the program, to still be a part of the program, to have played for this team. Played in Warren, Indiana on my jersey. Mike is a, a wonderful host, and um, we're going to get better for you. And uh, stick with us. We're, we're, we're going to be fine. We're going to grow just as much as Indiana is going to grow here in the next few years. And uh, pretty soon, you may see the Mike and Steve show on ESPN. So I, yeah. you know, I'd rather I'm go not to selling like, out uh, to them. We'll just do it ourselves. No, 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 no. I, I'd rather go to Prime, Prime TV or Netflix, <laughs> where we can just really – do the whole sexy thing, you know, so. Well, maybe we could just do it on Cinemax at midnight and just sit in our underwear and talk about it. Oh, uh, no, no, no. See, you know, then, then we could, I'm thinking YouTube now. We don't want to do that for YouTube. Uh, whatever. We, uh, uh, but we, we've enjoyed those that have listened. Thank you. And 
and the three people that actually made comments to us. Uh, actually, you know, we had more um, comments, but I didn't want to hurt your feelings, so I kept them to myself. Oh, <laughs> God, now I feel like Indiana. I'm getting dropped on the last game. I'm getting off the air. Thank you, everybody. And if, if we do play in the NIT or the C, whatever the CPI is, um, I don't know. If Indiana's playing again, we'll be on the air. If not, look for our webpage, and, and we'll broadcast it out on our, our Twitter pages about um, locker room lore. My, my project for the summer. Yeah, and we had 25 shows this year so far, not counting the numbers we'll get for this one. In those 25 shows, we had a little over 44,000 people to listen to those shows at one point or another. So we really want to thank everybody there. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. P.T. Barnum had a right. There's a sucker born every minute. <laughs> well, that I'm out of here. I'm All right, guys. I'm like, uh, I'm like Indiana in the first five minutes of the second half. I'm digging a hole. I'm not going to be able to get out of it. <laughs> All right, guys. For Steve Risley, I'm Mike Goodpaster. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak. Go IU!